Liberal Viewer presents. So Senator Ted Cruz, who uh, was over on uh, ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, and uh, one of the things he did was he um, attacked Rand Paul's uh, foreign policy, or he responded to a question about Rand Paul's foreign policy uh, in a very negative way. Uh, and I want to show you that clip here. Just days before Putin invaded Crimea, Paul said, quote, I think we need to have a respectful, sometimes adversarial, but a respectful relationship with Russia. Senator Rand Paul uh, said, some on our side are so stuck in the Cold War era, they want to tweak Russia all the time, and I don't think that's a good idea. What's your reaction to that? I'm a big fan of Rand Paul. He and I are good friends. I, I don't agree with him on foreign policy. I, I, I think U.S. leadership is, is critical in the world, and I agree with him that we should be very reluctant to deploy military force abroad. But I think there is a vital role, just as Ronald Reagan did. When Ronald Reagan called the Soviet Union an evil empire, when he stood in front Mr. of the Brandenburg Gorbachev, Gate and said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear, tear down, down this, wall, this wall, those words changed the course of history. The United States has a responsibility to defend our values. Senator Paul agreed to be interviewed on this week to give his perspective. And at the last minute, he backed out. So, yeah, he backed out of uh, This Week with George Stephanopoulos, but he was over on Fox News Sunday, and I'll show a response from him in a minute, but first I want to show uh, one more of the uh, uh, non-isolationist Republicans, the internationalist wing of the Republican Party, and this is a split in the Republican Party that goes back to, you know, World War One, World War Two. It's a very long-term split in the Republican Party, and uh, Peter King of New York, who is definitely a, an internationalist, uh, made pretty much the same kind of uh, criticism of uh, Rand Paul when he was asked about it by David Gregory on uh, Meet the Press uh, over in this clip. Now, the concerns that I have are still there. I mean, here's a person who said we're more concerned about uh, the CIA killing Americans uh, with drones uh, as they're having coffee in Starbucks, who said that the director of national intelligence should be in the same jail as Snowden. Uh, I mean, that this to me is, is scaring Americans. Our real enemy is al-Qaeda. We have to be concerned about Russia. He was being critical of Americans several weeks ago who say uh, he said we tweak the Russians too much. Uh, what, when I say he's appealing to the lowest common denominator, what he's doing, he's trying to somehow tell Americans we can retreat from the world, that uh, America is an imperial power. If we retreated, the world would be safer. The fact is nothing can make the world more dangerous than if America did retreat, go back into isolationism. This is not the days of Charles Lindbergh. We have to be a strong and viable nation, and we cannot allow isolationists to take over the Republican Party, because that would be damaging not just the party, more importantly to the country and the world. All right, Peter K so yeah, there you can see uh, a couple Republicans, Ted Cruz and uh, Senator Ted Cruz and uh, Congressman Peter King, both attacking Rand Paul as being an isolationist. But uh, Chris Wallace over on Fox News Sunday specifically asked Rand Paul about that, and he denied being an isolationist. He saw himself as following in the tradition of Ronald Reagan, and he also mentioned uh, George H. W. Bush, that, which I thought was kind of an interesting role model to look toward. and. Uh, I'll talk about it a little more after I show you uh, Rand Paul's response to the criticism of him as an isolationist on Fox News Sunday here. Well, you know, I see my foreign policy in the same line as what came out of probably the first George Bush. Um, Henry Kissinger wrote something in the Washington Post two days ago, which I agree with. I see it coming out of the mainstream of the Republican position. But the interesting thing is, is that I opposed uh, with, with, with real fervor, the involvement of us in Syria, and that became the dominant position in the country, both Republican and Democrat. There's not one Republican who's saying we should put military troops into uh, Crimea or into Ukraine. So I think I'm right in the middle of that position. And I think those who would try to argue that somehow I'm different than the mainstream Republican opinion are people who want to take advantage for their own personal political gain. I'm a great believer in Ronald Reagan. I'm a great believer in a strong national defense. In fact, what Ronald Reagan said in about one sentence sums up really a lot of what I believe. He said to our potential adversaries, he said, don't mistake our reluctance for war for a lack of resolve. People knew that with Ronald Reagan. They still need to know that with the United States. And part of the problem is I think this president hasn't projected enough strength and hasn't shown a priority to the national defense. That is something that uh, were I in charge, I would. Hmm, so that sounds like a uh, 
answer that's been rehearsed for a presidential run in terms of him not being an isolationist, but also noted that he also attacks President Obama as being weak, even though he said some statements that make him the target of weakness attacks from other Republicans. But I want to know what you think. Can Senator Rand Paul maintain his popularity with the more isolationist Ron Paul Republicans without alienating the more internationalist wing of the Republican Party? And especially for those who watched all the Rand Paul clips on my Sunday Clip Roundup, doesn't Senator Rand Paul give every indication he's running for president in 2016? I YouTube, you decide.